Aloha once again, friends and family. Let us pick it up at the concepts of heaven and hell. There are many upon your plane who think that as you grow into higher dimensions, you will become bored because everything will be simply love and light. It is like the concept of heaven where you are an angel playing a harp and sitting on a cloud. Obviously, <clears throat> that is an extremely limited concept of heaven. And indeed, if heaven were about sitting on a cloud playing a harp, you would eventually become quite bored and you would gladly welcome a trip to the eternal fires of hell because at least the devil knows how to throw a good party, right? Of course, most of you know that heaven and hell are just states of consciousness. We think hell is a rather amusing state of consciousness, for indeed, if the fires of hell are burning, they must be burning away your old issues. They must be purging and cleansing you, so perhaps souls would grow a great deal faster living in hell than in heaven, where all they do, where all they get to do, is learn a new song on their harps and maybe help St. Peter welcome newcomers. Eventually you would run out of clouds to sit on and would have to create new clouds and new harps. <clears throat> Let us get back to our story. We felt this divergence would lighten things up a bit. This channel has told us that we get a bit too serious. In reality, seriousness is a meaningless concept to us because it is so difficult to describe our consciousness to your earthly terms. It may come across as seriousness. Your ability to laugh and have fun is very important and it helps you grow as souls. So we hope to become less serious as we explore this means of communication further your role as creator gods. Getting back to the story of evolution, your souls began at level seven and the original spiral of evolution began there and moved into levels eight, nine, 10, 11, and 12, just as your infants grow from a tiny baby into to a fully functioning adult. So you may be asking yourself, what about levels one through six? Where do they fit into the story? Levels one through six of our creator's universe are the realms known as the outer dimensions of creation, the outer worlds of manifestation. These are the creations of our father, mother, God, and to some extent, they are also the creations of the creator gods and individual souls because all of us are able to create outer worlds as well as our own individual worlds within. You, beloved creators, not only have the opportunity as souls to explore the outer realms of creation, you have already been created by various souls who have gone before you that have been already created by various souls that have gone before you. But you are also able to create your own outer worlds as you evolve into higher densities. This is a never-ending process of extension and expansion. Exploring the outer realms You were given the ability to explore the six lower levels of creation, which are the levels governed by free will, individual choice, or soul choice. In other words, your seventh density soul is free to explore the six lower levels at any time or place because they are the dimensions that are subject to free will. And so each of your souls chose a particular density in which to begin its exploration. 
Now theoretically, and we say theoretically because there is not another word to accurately describe this idea, you are free to choose anywhere within those six levels of creation to begin your exploration as individual souls. <clears throat> theoretically, you could go from level five to level one, to level four, to level three, to level six, to level two, to level four at random, theoretically. However, <clears throat> when you chose a long time ago to explore certain realms within the six lower levels of creation, you were unprepared for some of your experiences you received. Each of those six levels has available to souls what is called a perceptive mechanism or body. It is a device created by your soul with the help of us, <clears throat> your creator gods, and with the help of other souls residing in levels 8 through 12. With the help of higher beings, you created bodies, perceptive mechanisms for, for exploring the six lower levels of creation. In the third dimension you have what is called a third density body, an animalistic biological form that resembles the animals who are the natural inhabitants of third density. And so you came into a body that is fashioned after the shape and function of animals, this human organism. As long as you are exploring third density, this human body is the perfect vehicle for your self-expression. It has all the functions of the animal plus some additional attributes that allow you to remain aware of your identity as higher density beings. All of the various functions of this third density biological organism are designed to help you explore, perceive, and interact in third density. Certain functions are intended to help you stay connected <clears throat> with your seventh density soul. You also have a few functions within your biological entity that are designed to interface with fourth, fifth, and sixth densities as first and second densities. You can think of your bones and minerals as first density and the organic matter within your body as second density, if you wish. The capacity of your perceptive mechanism A small percentage of the bodily functions are designed to keep you connected to the other densities. This is why your brain, the main receptive center of your body, has contained within it the faculties necessary to connect to other densities. This is why your brain, the main receptive center of your body, has contained within it the faculties necessary to connect with fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh densities. And this is why you have a nearly infinite capacity to your brain. This channel has given many times in his teachings the number 10 log 10 to the 98th power which can also be written as 10 to the 10th power to the 98th power. This <clears throat> figure represents the number of possible interconnections through which information can flow in one of your human brains. We apologize for repeating the channel's own teaching, but we feel it is appropriate for you to understand what you are capable of perceiving for he has indicated that if you were to write that number out longhand using the size of your pen and paper the zeros after the one 
would stretch around the earth several times and it would take you approximately 250,000 years to write the number. <clears throat> this nearly infinite brain capacity was given and placed into your biological form in order that you would not forget your higher density selves. Nevertheless, despite this incredible brain capacity, you were unprepared for the experience of third density and you did forget your connection to your higher density selves. That experience of forgetting is what you call the fall from grace, original cause or original sin. We felt a reminder of your amazing potential was in order here. <clears throat> the dynamics of lower density perception. The experience of densifying a part of your soul so that it could experience third density through this biological entity, your body, was so traumatic <clears throat> that you seemingly became trapped in third density. You began to believe you were a third density body, and then later, as you regained some of your awareness, you began to believe you were your mental body, or what you call your ego, your sense of individual self. Most of your scientists believe you have three components to the self, body, emotion, and mind. You have your physical body, which perceives third density reality. You have your emotions, which are your feeling receptors that create an experience of third density. And you have your mental body that forms images, ideas, concepts, <clears throat> and models and that communicates in your verbal language and eventually telepathic language you have come to the belief most of you on earth that that is who you are a body emotion and mind complex which you call a personality when you ask the question who are you most of you will reply I am a human being living on earth and I have this particular work that I do and I have a family etc. And all of that is your identification with the earthly plane of existence. This might seem like a basic review but there is a method to our discourse so please bear with us. Returning to seventh density. Various mechanisms were put into place in order to allow you to evolve back out of your trapped state and regain the knowledge of yourselves as individual seventh density souls. You have a process of evolution that takes you from third density, which includes first and second, back up to seventh density. And this is the process that many of you call returning home to your soul essence. Some of you confuse seventh density with the level of the Godhead, and so you say you are returning home to the Godhead. <clears throat> many of you recognize that seventh density is the level of what you call the Garden of Eden, or the level of your original paradise your original home so it is like returning to a beautiful place that you remember in your distant memory it is like recovering from the fall which is actually a more accurate phrase because in a way it is exactly that recovering and returning from the fall however when you return you will have far greater awareness than when you started you will have the experience of the outer worlds. You as individual souls chose to experience the outer worlds 
you got trapped in them, and now you are finding your way back to seventh density, the level of your soul. And once you find your way back, you will have the choice to go out and explore once again the outer realms or continue on your evolutionary spiral up to 12th density where you will become creator gods, actualized rather than simply in potential. <clears throat> Some of you will choose to become spirit guides as you call them to those who are trapped in the lower densities. To do this, you will take a percentage or portion of your soul energy and project it back into the lower density worlds. But you will not have a biological perceptive mechanisms mechanism for the lower worlds. You will simply be functioning as fragments of soul energy, which is another <clears throat> name for disembodied spirit guides. You have various aspects to your soul called fragments, which we will talk about in the next section. We will go into more of the mechanics of what you call soul fragmentation and soul integration. We introduced the idea of soul division back in chapter 1. Now we will expand our discussion to include additional types of division and fragmentation. Before we do, let us summarize what we have said thus far. More analogies of the creation process. God, Goddess, all that is, whatever you want to call it, decided it wanted to experience its own creation. So it created what are called individual souls or individual aspects of itself in order to explore the universe. This process <clears throat> can be likened to giving birth to individual human babies. These baby souls emerged from the Godhead and became seventh density entities, and these seventh density entities were given a choice. They could explore the lower six levels of creation, or they could evolve into parent souls, mature souls, as we should call them, by going directly from the seventh to the twelfth level through a process called the upward ascending spiral of evolution. At some point in this process, <clears throat> they become like their parents, creator gods. At that point, they could repeat the cycle by giving birth to additional souls who in turn could evolve and in turn give birth, etc., continuing the process. Just as your earth children may go off to summer camp when they reach a certain age, Perhaps they go year after year for a particular number of years. Your souls can choose to go into the lower densities to explore and then come back and tell their parents all about their experience in the outer creation or summer camp. In other words, <clears throat> you can tell your cosmic parents all about your experience in the lower densities when you return to your seventh density homes. When you got trapped in the lower densities, it was necessary to create some remedial educational faculties, facilities. Just as <clears throat> in your world you have remedial learning centers for those who have become intellectually handicapped, actually all of you, after your experience of third density, became intellectually handicapped. You were no longer able to function as fully aware seventh density souls. So you needed remedial teaching devices. One of those devices detailed in chapter two is what you call the wheel of reincarnation. This particular teaching device allows you to keep 
fragmenting a portion of your soul into physical bodies over and over in order to continue your exploration of third density until you have evolved sufficiently to move into fourth density. Then the process continues in a little different manner and you create fourth density bodies which are essentially the same as third density bodies except that the intellect and psychic intuitive functions are more developed. We realize we are repeating an earlier teaching using slightly different words and this is intentional. Evolving from third to seventh density. To put it another way, you create third density bodies to experience third density worlds until you evolve sufficiently to be able to create fourth density bodies to experience fourth density worlds. Then you eventually evolve sufficiently to be able to create fifth density bodies <clears throat> to explore fifth density worlds until you evolve back into seventh level. Now in reality, it is a little more complex than that because when you reach fifth density, you are no longer on the wheel of reincarnation. You are now on the ascension spiral. When you reach fifth density, you no longer have to discard your biological entity. You can simply modify it directly so that it can perceive fifth and sixth density levels and to some extent, seventh density. So the process is modified a bit once you reach fifth density. You have in fifth density what are called etheric light bodies, which are vehicles specifically designed to experience fifth density. Your fifth density vehicles are a little more sturdy and stable <clears throat> than your third and fourth density bodies and they are able to maintain themselves indefinitely within the time streams of the lower world. Your fifth density vehicle is capable of exploring fourth density and to some degree third without having to be discarded repeatedly. The wheel of reincarnation is essentially a teaching device for third and fourth density souls. It is a bit easier getting around in 5th and 6th density light bodies because you do not need to rely on mechanical contraptions to fly through the air or drive along the surface of the planet. Your 5D vehicles do not degenerate because they are no longer subject to the law of entropy or the decay cycle of the outer worlds. The choice to return to lower worlds after reaching seventh density. Once you have learned everything you desire to learn from being in fifth and sixth densities, you will return to seventh density. And at that point, you have a decision to make. Do you want to go back and explore more outer worlds? Do you want to go back into the outer worlds specifically to assist souls who are evolving there by going through the process of fragmenting a part of yourselves as spirit guides? When you fragment a part of yourselves in that manner, you have several choices available to you. One. You can each assign yourselves to one evolving soul in the role of a primary spirit guide. Or two, you can become what are known as free spirits and migrate from soul to soul, giving assistance where necessary. Or three, you can choose to come back into embodiment, but you are not bound by the laws of karma you are simply volunteers that have chosen to take embodiment in one of the lower realms in order to assist from that state rather than from the spirit worlds.
So you have a number of choices at that point. Some of you are in category three. You have returned more than once to your seventh density soul level and have volunteered to come back into the lower density worlds in order to assist other third density souls in awakening to their seventh density selves. At this time on earth, you also have, whether you are calling them indigo, crystal, or rainbow children, seventh density souls that have come specifically into your planes and dimensions in order to help the souls evolving in third and fourth densities. These children have come through the incarnational process by densifying a portion of themselves directly into biological entities in order to help the earth. The evolution of planetary systems. Earth herself also happens to be going through an evolutionary process because outer creation evolves and grows as well as individual souls. The outer worlds are not static. As the outer creation grows and evolves, the density levels of the outer worlds change. <clears throat> Your third density worlds eventually evolve into fourth density worlds. Your fourth density worlds will evolve into fifth density worlds. New third density worlds are being created all the time. By third density, in this case, we are including first and second densities as well, because you will find that a first density world will eventually evolve plant life and become second density. And in time, a second density world will evolve animal life and become third density. So new planets and solar systems evolve into third density, much as your earth did many hundreds of millions of years ago. Once a planet evolves into third density, it is capable of receiving human souls in these third density bodies you are currently inhabiting. Now some souls will choose to fragment a portion of themselves in the form of minerals and plants residing in first and second densities. However, the process of evolving from first to second density and second to third density is a little bit different than going from third to fourth density and fourth to fifth density. It requires that a piece of spirit extract itself out of first or second density and merge with a larger piece of itself before that larger piece can incarnate into a third or fourth density realm. This begs the question as to whether an animal can come back as a human or a human can come back as an animal. And the answer to that is yes, but not through reincarnation. It is a different process and it is rarely done because most of the time when a soul has decided to explore first or second density, it does not continue to go back and explore those realms over and over. The actual process of soul dis, dis, <laughs> densification into fourth, first, let me start that over. The actual process of soul densification into first or second density is too complicated to go into at this time. We apologize. It is necessary that we concentrate on third, fourth, and fifth densities as those are the realms that you have decided to explore at this time as individual souls. The Ascension of Mother Earth
So what is happening on your earth? At this time, your earth is being moved into fourth density status. It is becoming a fourth density world. And after approximately the year of 2030 on your timeline, your planet will be officially designated a fourth density world. Souls who wish to experience earth will incarnate exclusively into fourth density biological entities. Now you may be asking yourself, what is the difference between a third density and fourth density entity? A third density biological humanoid entity is primarily an animal in human form, the major or NPC. <laughs> The majority of the consciousness of a third density human is animalistic in nature, <clears throat> although the physical human form is a bit more refined than most of the animals on your planet. The consciousness of a third density human is primarily evolving according to the ideas of procreation survival, competition, instinct, etc. The mind of a third density human is not fully developed, although it can function well enough to create some semblance of civilized behavior. A fourth density human being is a soul in human form similar to third density, except that the mind is more fully developed. This fourth density human is aware of itself as consciousness, as creative force, and it understands that its consciousness creates its perception of reality. And so it is a conscious creator walking on the earth plane. Now, because third and fourth densities are similar, the fourth density human is capable of interacting with third density humans as well as other third density beings, dogs, cats, sheep, goats, etc. And both third and fourth density humans are capable of interacting with second density plants to some extent. Eventually, Earth will become a fifth density planet, but that will not be for a considerable amount of time. However, some of you will choose to move into fifth density etheric light bodies and will have the choice of exploring fifth density worlds once you do that, or choosing to remain with Earth and assist in her fourth density life and process. If you are in a fourth density human body, you have the option of reincarnating on a fourth density world other than Earth. Most of you will choose to stay with Earth and not go to other planets. So you will either recycle your physical form through the reincarnational process and be reborn on Earth into another fourth density body or you will move off the reincarnational wheel and directly onto the ascension spiral, in which case you will transform your present body directly and remain with Earth. You can also elect to explore other fifth density worlds. As a fifth density being, you can interact with fourth density worlds and souls. But in most cases, your communication with third density souls will be limited due to their inability to perceive and comprehend fifth density. Because of the inherent difficulties within third density worlds, and the possibility of becoming trapped when visiting a third density world, 
it is rare for fifth density souls to reincarnate into third density worlds in order to assist the potential of getting trapped once again in the third density environment is quite great earth is an exception to the normal progression of planets because she is moving into the fourth density realms there are souls coming from very high densities into the earth plane at this time, including the indigo, crystal, rainbow, and dragon children. They know earth is about to move into fourth density, and they want to be part of that experience. They want to assist other souls in moving into fourth and fifth densities and so they have volunteered to come to earth at this time it is a very unique <clears throat> time for earth there are only a few planets in your galaxy that are going through a similar process at this time some of your teachers have suggested there are 12 such planets in the milky way in reality there are about 123 that we are aware of going through similar processes to Earth's. When you consider that there are millions of planets with intelligent life in your galaxy, that is a very small number. And so, indeed, what is happening on Earth is very special. Completing Karma It is possible to complete all karmic agreements in one lifetime, including the one you are in now. Karma, which has been called unfinished business by those who wish to simplify the idea, is a process whereby a soul does not complete a lesson within a given biological time frame. Within third density, your physical bodies have not evolved sufficiently to become free of entropy or decay. So as your physical body dies, many lessons that are not completed during that lifetime get carried over into future lifetimes as karma. They are carried by what is called your causal body from one lifetime to another and the memories or imprints are redeposited into the biological entity of the next lifetime and are recoded into the etheric and astral bodies of the next biological entity. You can also accrue and balance karma within a given lifetime. So, in the present lifetime, the soul has a chance to complete the lessons that were started in previous lifetimes. This process can continue for as many lifetimes as needed until the soul has learned all it desires to learn about those particular situations, experiences, and events. When all of the lessons on all of the various aspects of third and fourth densities have been learned to the soul's satisfaction, the soul has reached a state that is karma-free, having freed up or resolved all of the karma. Because most souls take more than one lifetime to learn lessons, they accrue karma. But it is not absolutely necessary for that to happen. Souls in lower densities can elect to live their lives in such a way that they do not accumulate unlearned lessons. A soul is not required to work out past karma from lifetime to lifetime. 
Most of the time, souls are not evolved enough to know how to resolve their lessons or learn them all within one lifetime. In rare cases, <clears throat> souls come into third density and learn everything they came to learn in one lifetime, and they do, do not bring any karma with them into their next incarnation. The idea that a soul must keep incarnating over and over again in order to learn a lesson, a soul lesson, is not an entirely accurate concept. Most souls do not want to abandon a lesson before it is learned because it defeats the purpose for coming into density to begin with. <clears throat> when a soul chooses to explore a particular density, it does not want to feel incomplete. If it has not gathered all the soul experience it desires, it will voluntarily choose to come back to re-experience and continue those lessons. It may appear that a soul is trapped on the wheel of karma when it, when in the ultimate sense, it is not trapped, <clears throat> but merely does not want to abandon its soul lessons until it has fully learned them. There is a bit of misunderstanding here, fostered by many of your Eastern religions, that says you must pay for past karma. In other words, if you did something you regretted in a past lifetime, under some religions you would have to suffer for it in this lifetime. That is an elaborate form of guilt that in many ways exceeds the forms of guilt practiced in your Western religions. In your Western religions, the guilty hope for heaven and fear hell, whereas in your Eastern religions, the guilty look forward to many more lifetimes of hell. <clears throat> We do not see any advantage of the Eastern religions over the Western ones in that regard. They are all equally erroneous in their perceptions. In the next section, we will talk about another reason souls stay on the wheel of reincarnation. This involves the idea of fragmentation. If a soul's aspects and pieces are not integrated, <clears throat> but instead are scattered and disjointed, such a soul may not have enough energy to move into the spiral of ascension. Most of our discussion so far has been about the linear time progression of the soul. Before we discuss fragmentation and integration, <clears throat> Let us explore the idea of simultaneous time. Simultaneous awareness of higher and lower densities. It is possible to be fully enlightened and live in this world at the same time. Also, it is possible to be simultaneously in the higher densities while experiencing the lower densities. Because all time is essentially now, <clears throat> you are doing both because in, a, in the non-linear frame of perception that you are capable of experiencing, everything happens at once in creation. From a higher perspective, there is no linear time. Outside of linear time, you are the totality of God experiencing itself as individual segments, individual souls. The twelve aspects of your being, from your twelfth 
density God self down to the first density minerals in your body are simultaneously experiencing all of creation. <clears throat> but within the linear time frame, your souls gather knowledge and experience as they ascend through the levels of perception. Because you are moving, growing, and evolving, when you choose to move from 7th to 8th density to what is called the Oversoul level, you will be capable of sending pieces of yourself down into lower densities to simultaneously experience various aspects of those realms. As you move into ninth, 10th, 11th, and 12th densities, you become more and more of the creation and are able to simultaneously experience yourself as many beings at once. In the ultimate sense, you are the totality of God experiencing the whole of creation simultaneously. This process is known as soul clustering and is beyond the scope of this book. How to access the various dimensions of the universe. To help you understand the shift you are going through, we are going to discuss how the various densities and dimensions of the universe are constructed. We promise to use easy to understand terminology as we venture forth into this arena. We will not detail the individual levels as that is contain <clears throat> contained within other books, including Life on the Cutting Edge. Rather, this discussion will focus on how to go between the different densities and dimensions. As we stated previously, there are doorways between the dimensions of our Creator's universe called by various Earth names, including stargates, portals, vortexes, many wormholes, etc. Not all of these terms mean exactly the same thing. For example, a vortex does not necessarily imply the existence of a portal or stargate. A vortex is merely a concentrated area of electromagnetic EM energy, usually where two or more ley lines come together. And it is <clears throat> only when EM energy has is configured in a certain way that you have a device or area capable of providing a dimensional shift. You have a term used by some of your advanced mathematicians and physical scientists called zero point. This refers to the exact balance point between the polarities of an EM field or rather, the point at which the polarity collapses or becomes essentially non-existent. At the point of zero polarity, a stargate, portal, or mini wormhole is formed, linking the third dimension to other dimensions. Keep in mind that this is greatly oversimplified explanation. Another way of stating this is that your third dimensional universe is constructed of polarized EM fields that overlap one another in a way that creates continuity between 3D time space. Of course you have your gravitational and nuclear forces as well but these have more to do with the affinity of objects and levels of consciousness existing within your 3D time space 
and less to do with the way your 3D time-space interfaces with other dimensions of our Creator's universe. You will find that our Creator's universe is designed using several energy configurations which we will call sacred geometries. <clears throat> our definition of sacred geometry will be precisely this, the energy configurations of the Creator and the manifest creation. You will note that the primary configurations evident, at least to you in 3D time space, are the circle, spiral, and various derivatives of the triangle. The square, which you see often in your manufactured lifestyle, acts as a base or foundation for triangular forms, such as the base of a pyramid. The square is the most dense and stable of the forms and represents a state of stagnation when souls are at rest in the energy of the square. The circle, on the other hand, represents the point of greatest fluidity, since it is the shape of all structures as they approach a singularity. The singularity is the actual doorway or portal between dimensions. At the exact point of the singularity, you are in the void or the unmanifested creation. You can think of this as the point within the mind of God that some of your teachers refer to. This entire universe began as a point within the mind of God and then expanded and extended itself <clears throat> in the manner your scientists refer to as the Big Bang until all that you see and experience was brought into manifestation. The geometric configurations that exist between the square and the circle or between the base dimension and the singularity are both beautiful and complex. If the forms are divergent, meaning they are emanating from a point and growing in size and scope, then a dimensional realm is forming or becoming more evident. If the forms are converging, meaning they are diminishing in size and scope, they are moving toward the singularity and are thus approaching the point of dimensional shift and preparation for ascending or descending along the dimensional continuum. One of the simplest <clears throat> examples of this involves the tetrahedron, or pyramidal structure whereby two pyramids are stacked base to base to form an object similar to a four-sided cut and polished diamond. At the base of each pyramid is the square, the most stable part of the object. When a soul is experiencing <clears throat> the energies of the square, he or she is completely solidified within the dimension that is formed by the tetrahedron. Note, you can also have a triangular pyramid, a pyramid with a triangular base, but sub such an object is actually less stable than the four-sided pyramid in most cases. At the apex or capstone of each of the pyramids forming the tetrahedron, you have the singularity stargate or portal that allows the soul to move from one dimension to another. In the example of the tetrahedron, 
you can have one pyramid pointing up, ascending, and one pointing down, descending. The up-facing pyramid has a capstone that represents the stargate or portal that is accessed in order to move into a higher dimension. The down-facing pyramid as a capstone that represents the stargate or portal that is accessed in order to move into a lower dimension. Of course, up and down here have nothing to do with directions. If you can visualize tetrahedrons stacked end to end across the universe, you have the most basic concept of how the dimensions are constructed and how they are ascended. Some of your scientists have correctly postulated that black holes are doorways between the dimensions and many have envisioned the idea of traveling into the center of the galaxies and through the black holes in the hope of entering another universe or realm. We need, to di we need to differentiate between the black holes at the core of most galaxies and the many black holes and many wormholes that exist everywhere throughout 3D time space. The massive black holes that, exis that exist at the center of various heavenly bodies such as galaxies, quasar clusters, and interstellar gases are links between this local universe and other universes, or what have been called parallel universes. The many black holes and many wormholes, M-I-N-I -I, by the way, that exist in great numbers within so-called ordinary time and space are the stargates and portals that allow you to travel between the dimensions of this local universe. While there are similarities between the many black holes and the massive black holes, the levels they access are very different. In addition to the triangular-based geometric energy configurations, you have various derivatives, <clears throat> including octahedrons, isocahedrons, dodecahedrons, and duododecahedrons, etc. We will not take time <clears throat> right now to elaborate on these forms, as you can find examples of them on your internet. The spiral is a very unique form in the design of the cosmos, you will find that the concept of time, as well as the idea of evolution and the construction of all life forms, are based on the spiral. Although it is not entirely accurate, you can think of the triangles, pyramids, tetrahedrons, isocahedrons, dodecahedrons, squares, circle, circles, and singularities as part of the inanimate creation or the basic building blocks of the universe. While you can think of the spiral and its associated fractals and patterns as the animate building blocks of life existing with the inanimate framework of the universe. Another way of thinking of this is to introduce the concept of momentum or angular velocity. All animate forms within the universe have to some degree a momentum or movement of consciousness and form within the relatively static structure of the base universe. Spirals are formed when objects are rotated 
or moved through an EM field. Although gravitational and nuclear forces are technically in the form of spirals, when examined in great depth and with proper instrumentation, the most obvious energy field acting upon objects is the EM field. The Godhead consists of both <clears throat> eternal changelessness and continuous movement consciousness. Consciousness as it traverses the static, changeless base form of the universe creates spiral or fractal patterns of energy within this stratum, changeless aspect of God. Your scientists call the base or stratum the Bose-Einstein condensate. As temperatures approach what you call absolute zero, you discover this static state of the universe. At absolute zero, <clears throat> all motion ceases, and you have a pure changeless state of the primordial God essence. You will find that this changeless state also appears at the exact point of the singularities existing in infinite number throughout the Creator's universe. Concurrently, you will find that the zero point of absolute neutrality between the polarities of an EM field are also the points of static changelessness within the mind of God. We have so far discussed at least three ways of accessing the eternal changeless aspect of the Creator. One, through the removal of all thermodynamic elements from a region of space thereby creating absolute zero temperature, meaning no movement of particles or consciousness, a state called the Bose-Einstein condensate by some physicists. Two, through moving along the converging sides of the pyramidal type structure into the singularity at the apex or capstone of the structure, which essentially means entering the many black holes and many wormholes that exist throughout 3D time space. <clears throat> Three, by entering into the point of exact neutrality between the polarities of an EM field, the region called zero point by some of your scientists. It is important for us to remind you, dear creators, that no matter how you access this eternal, unchanging aspect of God, you are essentially at the same point beyond all time and space. Whether you enter a mini black hole in a galaxy billions of light years from the Milky Way, or you enter in through the zero point of an EM field in your own earthly laboratory, or you construct a pyramid in your living room and learn how to activate the capstone in such a way that you pass through the singularity and into the next dimension at the point of singularity you are in the same exact point as you are in that distant galaxy. Every point within the mind of God is the same point because the concept of time and space does not exist in the changeless <clears throat> eternal state. Your rational mind will have, <clears throat> will have a hard time grasping this concept, but you can visualize it to some extent. 
when you apply this idea to consciousness instead of a static geometrical state of 3D time space, it makes <clears throat> perfect sense. All systems of meditation, all paths to enlightenment, involve the same idea. By quieting the mind, you enter into the still, timeless realms of pure spirit. When there is no movement of consciousness, you position yourself automatically within the singularity and therefore within the point of of eternal, unchanging God consciousness. We will now switch gears and return to our discussion of soul evolution. And when we return, my friends, we will pick it up right there at the evolution and reincarnation of the animal kingdom. And until then, we leave you in the love, unity, and light of the infinite Creator. <laughs>